Chancellor Patton, President Gertler, Dean Amon, former Dean Charles, distinguished members of the Platform Party, parents, guests, and most importantly, graduates. Wow, what an incredible honor and truly a surprise. I never expected to be up on this podium again. You know, it's always nice to be recognized, but what makes this truly special is that it's from people that I so greatly respect and from an institution that I so fondly admire. So that's why I'm deeply humbled and grateful for the honorary degree that you have bestowed upon me today. Thank you very much. Now graduates, congratulations to each and every one of you on reaching this very important milestone in your life. Do you know what this is? For those of you that can't see in the back, it's a $100 bill. The $100 bill is the highest valued and least circulated note in Canada. This is the last bill that will feature Sir Robert Borden, who was Prime Minister 100 years ago today, our eighth Prime Minister, who also led Canada during World War I. He was a colorful character, and he also happened to be the Chancellor of Queens and McGill, so enough about him. <laughs> the, uh, <clears throat> the point I want to make is that all of you have something in common with this $100 bill. You are also both valuable and rare. Did you know that only one in four adult Canadians has a university degree? That's one of the highest percentages in the developed world. Sadly, that figure globally stands at around 7%. So you are truly special as getting here is no easy feat. You have proven that you have the discipline, stamina, and work ethic to succeed. Congratulations to all of you. Now, some of you may think that university is all about simply teaching you specific knowledge of a subject matter, simple retention of facts and figures, as that is mostly what exams measure. Some of you may even question the value of your education. And why not? Today, basic knowledge has become ubiquitous, and its value is decreasing every year. By next year, pundits predict that one half of the world's population will have access to the internet, where information is just a click away. Who needs textbooks when Alexa, Siri, and Cortana have all the answers? So it's little wonder that many people today are anxious about their future. Taxis are being replaced with autonomous vehicles. Crops are being harvested with robotic machines. Stores are disappearing in favor of e-commerce sites. And fast food restaurants are experimenting with home delivery and automated servers. Think back to your summer job days. Where will future students find work? Where will those without degrees find work? Technology today is changing so rapidly that it's easy to lose focus on what really matters. We have so many people working on technical problems, constantly improving a process or an application. Solving a technical problem is important, but technology often creates more problems than it solves. Consider all the social issues and implications of technology. How do we deal with the social challenges of climate change, income inequality, nuclear prolifer proliferation, genetic engineering, and the threats of global pandemics? How do we as a society face these challenges and address them? And who will solve these enormous problems? It is you in this room that must rise to these challenges. You are now equipped with a university degree you are prepared to tackle the pressing challenges of today. You may not realize it, but I, for one, believe that you are prepared. You see, the education you received involved much more than simple accumulate, simply accumulating knowledge. Along the way, I think you've acquired the skills needed to get the job done. So to explain why I feel this way, let me reflect for a moment on some of my own personal experience since graduation. I worked for almost 40 years with a company, as Christina mentioned, called Brookfield, where I enjoyed considerable success. Our organization grew from 12 people when I joined to almost 30,000 globally today. It's truly an amazing Canadian success story. Over those years, we hired many people, 
and many of them went on to be successful in their own careers, both within Brookfield and externally. Most of the people we hired had a university degree. And while I remember a lot about them, I rarely recall which university they came from or what degree they had. That's because over time I realized that the school they went to and the program they studied was not that critical to their future success. This was not the key determinant. So why then did we mostly hire university graduates and what else mattered? Well, in my experience, there were three very important character traits that all successful candidates possessed. And while you may not realize it, I believe that all of you here have these character traits already inside of you to varying degrees. These traits helped to get you here and were further developed and shaped here. And if you focus on these character traits and further develop them, I believe this will improve your chances of being successful in your future careers. So let's have a look at what these traits are. First, I realize that successful people have this incredible thirst for knowledge and learning. They are not afraid to ask questions, and they know where to get answers. Before coming to the first interview, they took the initiative to the inform themselves of what Brookfield did as a company. They were inquisitive by nature, were very interested in today's news, and knew what was happening in the world around them. They possessed humility because they understood they had a lot to learn, yet they were confident in what they knew and were open to new ideas. Why is this so important? Well, consider this. One half of all people still feel that climate change is an unproven theory when the evidence overwhelmingly supports the science. Similarly, one half of all people think genetically modified foods are bad for them, even though there is no evidence to date that they are. So you may attribute this to the stubbornness of old age, but consider this. One in four millennials also believe vaccinations lead to autism. And again, this theory has been debunked on numerous occasions. This is a higher percentage than the general population, and it may simply be because millennials are scared of needles. Who knows? <laughs> so why do so many people hold on to such misguided views? Think of all the things in history we once took at fact as fact that we now have, have simply, that now have simply been proven wrong. I studied physics here and I was taught that electrons circle the nucleus of an atom, and today we know that's not entirely true. Think about Pluto being a planet, or uh, all of the other things uh, in history that uh, we now know are, are not uh, what we thought they were. You know, we as a human species, we do not actually know much at all. In spite of all our technical advances, there is so much to learn, so much that we still don't know. Having an open mind and asking questions is critical to your future success. Your degree is merely the first step on a lifetime journey and commitment to learning. The learning the skills that you acquired here are tremendously important to your future careers. So please keep on learning. Secondly, I believe people that have the confidence to make decisions even within, that successful people have the confidence to make decisions even with imperfect information. They rely on what they have learned and hopefully make a good decision and realize that they can always correct a bad decision. True learning comes from making mistakes. Said differently, if you, do, if you don't make decisions, you won't make any mistakes, but you also won't learn anything. Elon Musk said, and I quote, it's better to make many decisions with a slightly higher error rate than few decisions with a lower error rate. You can always reverse a bad decision in the future as long as it's not catastrophic, which they rarely are. So if the odds of making a good decision are in your favor, you should make as many decisions as possible within the bounds of what is executable. Only the way Elon could say it. Anyway, this is excellent advice from an amazing entrepreneur and proven performer, albeit a Queens alum. <laughs> Trust your training and instincts. Don't be afraid of failure or of making a decision. Lastly, I learned that successful individuals are not necessarily the smartest people in the room. Instead, they are those that can work collectively, collegially with others to solve a problem. They are team players with problem-solving skills. 
Ronald Reagan once said, you can accomplish anything as long as you don't care who gets the credit. Many of today's complex problems can be solved by people who work well together and check their egos at the door. Conversely, there is nothing more destructive than politics within an organization. So don't work alone. Surround yourself with as many talented people as you can, and you will be amazed at what you can accomplish. So that's my advice to all of you. Focus on lifelong learning, decision-making, and teamwork. And while I'm on the subject of teamwork, let me pull out that bill again. On the back of this bill, there's a depiction about the discovery of insulin. A Canadian doctor named Frederick Banting developed an idea to produce insulin, and he presented it to Professor McLeod here at the University of Toronto. Professor McLeod arranged for two undergrad students to help Banting conduct his research. However, Banting only needed one student. So Clark Noble and Charles Best flipped a coin to see who would get the job. And the rest is history. Banting and Best shared the Nobel Prize, and they split the money that came with the prize. So the lesson here is that hard work and good education do not necessarily determine your future success. A bit of good luck also helps. And so with that, I wish all of you much success in your future careers. I hope that your lives are filled with much happiness and joy and plenty of these $100 bills. Thank you very much.